it's gonna happen like this way. So to me, some people say like you know, Cardano is not focused on B2C application, they focus on B2B application, that's why they have a huge potential here too. I don't think so. Still, they're gonna facing about you know these market constraints, which are gonna typically happening about the B2B application steps here. So still, you know, for them to compete with Ethereum, Eon, Trans, those are major like B2B. C application focus bus project here is extremely difficult to compete with them. That's what I want to tell you, tell you here, okay? Hi, hello, I'm Mr. Masa. So today is the investment review for the Cardano. The token code is ADA. So the Cardano is one of the oldest and also the major growth project in the blockchain space. So let's start, okay? And as usual, for my portfolio strategy staff, so I only allocate my assets to the Bitcoin and all the other coins which is related to these six categories, okay? Now today's Cardano is, you know, category kind of here. Number five, birth and blockchain OS. And if you want to deeply understand my portfolio strategy staff, please check out my other video in the, my YouTube channel, okay? And as usual, this is also the six analytical points for the altcoin and analytics success too. So starting for the pain points, product, team, execution power, token economy, and hype cycle. And at the maximum level for the each you know, analytical points, I set the 5.0. So the total score in the maximum level is a 30 points, okay? And then let's start for the pain point analysis stuff. Now for the brewers, you know, this is a major pain point that you know, all the boss player is in trying to solve. So the devs need birth for the product developments in their early stages and why, okay? The first of all, we have to understand about the current internet is controlled by tech titans, such as Google, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, right? Because, you know, especially like in Google and Amazon provide, you know, their, you know, crowd infrastructure, there are a lot of like application players such as Netflix, Uber, you know, use their, you know, infrastructure, which means that, you know, entire internet space controlled about the infrastructure perspective is, you know, by these tech titans. And if it is totally against the, you know, philosophy or future development of the blockchain space too, because, you know, these infrastructure is a centralized entity or centralized organization based one. And blockchain is based on a P2P, you know, technology, you know, stuff too. So, you know, we prefer the decentralized infrastructure to run into entire, like those kind of B2C application or B2B applications, such as like, you know, e-commerce or something in a blockchain space. But for the devs, it's actually, it's extremely difficult to aggregate those computer resources from the P2B network, you know, as we're gonna see in the you know, Bitcoin space. Because, you know, for the application perspective, so, so this is a token economy design matrix that I made. And then these are the major, the six categories in the blockchain industry space on altcoin. And then DAPs here. So of course, you know, we want to use a little bit like, you know, the blockchain application in the decentralized fashion stuff. But for the DAPs, if they want to aggregate the computer resources to run the application stuff, not about that they have to take in care of those kind of computer resources right here, but also they have to think about a lot of other critical things, such as real economy, security economy, or the network effects. And this is also very, very critical for the DAPs. So if someone or some proper player can help them to aggregate those computer resources instead of them, you know, kind of would be very, very helpful for the DAPs player to develop the application stuff to more massive user base one in a short period of time, okay? So from this perspective, the birds play a very critical role here, especially about the you know, DAO, it's, you know, computer aggregated, you know, aggregated computer resource perspective stuff, okay? And then when you see the history of the internet, actually we're gonna experience these very, very similar experiences to, to scale up the entire indus, internet industry in the you know, last 10 years or so. And then let me you know, introduce about this point. So we call this in you know, a computer big bun, which has actually happened in 2006 to 2007. And then we're gonna experience with the two major innovations to happen this one. After these two innovations, we're gonna experience a you know, massive amount of you know, applications is gonna be released in our internet space. That's why internet experiences a huge market growth after this you know, two innovation happens. And one is about you know, Amazon AWS, cloud computing system. The other one, the other one is in Apple iOS. So let's start from here. So, you know, before the AWS, those app developer who wants to start a kind of new, you know, web service or something, have to rent their data center in a massive investor stuff. 
And usually the minimum cost for you know, rent these data center to run their website application stuff, they have to pay like you know, $33,000 or like you know, $5,000 per month or so. So it's a little bit expensive for them, right? So that is why a lot of app developers hesitate to develop and start their new project because of this cost burden, okay? But AWS start to provide very new you know, cost structure model, which is actually, they can only charge for the developer just like you know, in a minutes basis or second basis model. So that is why if the user base is still quite small in our early stage for this you know, new website application stuff, you know, those app developers only need to pay $30 or $50 per month or so. So it's much, much cheaper than before. That is why we can experience you know, huge application growth in the market, you know, in the space. And also in you know, iOS, but well, simply saying iPhone, smartphone stuff, also help them a developer provide more like, you know, you know user-friendly, easy to use application when this, you know, this kind of small device. Because, you know, because with smartphone, a lot of like non-personal computer users start to buy a smartphone. So that is why, you know, internet, you know, personal computer user, it massively grow up, you know, with the smartphone stuff. Okay. So that is why, you know, these two innovations eventually brought us the computer big one. Okay, then you know we're gonna say you know, this one is completely analogy for the blockchain space too, because as I said, especially these area AWS, AWS, you know, similar theory here that the uh, for the app developer who wants to aggregate the computer resource in P2P fashions, it's extremely difficult and it, it requires a lot of work to aggregate those computer resources stuff in a short period of time. So that is why bus player instead of DAP application staff. You know, aggregate these computer resources, then you know, charge them to use that use that one in a millisecond based one. So, which is helpful to experience the entire market growth like this way, just like a computer big one. So, and we can so simply we can say like you know, the bus is just like you know, competing in big one on a blockchain space. Okay. Then, based on this understanding, let's move to the next one: the product analysis. And to help you understand about, you know, this is kind of basic you know, structure of the BIRS project. So, you know, the Cardano system overview. So here's like, you know, cloud computing resources in a P2P space. So every single node over the world who have in free will to join Cardano BIRS system or not. Because, you know, Cardano system is a public blockchain waste one and a proof of stake one. Okay. And then Cardano provide application development platform for those in you know, app developer here who wants to develop the you know, blockchain based application stuff. So this is like you know basic like any system overview of the birth project on the Cardano. Okay. And the other you know, things also we should understand the difference between like you know decentralized cloud and the centralized cloud and stuff. You know, also help you understand about you know birth project itself and the Cardano is this you know diagram here. So usually when I when we call the centralized cloud here, we have three components to run the system. First one is transaction system. Second one is you know, storage, who's gonna you know, record the transaction record here, and then they're gonna use to analyze it for the you know, search or like recommend something. So we call it the analytical engine here. So this is a you know, minimum three components for the center of the crowd, okay? And when you say the bus in a blockchain space at this moment, most of the bus is actually currently here. They're gonna only run a transaction system here. Then why? Because the blockchain technology itself which is you know, born from Bitcoin, is purely run on a function just like a transaction system. They don't have any kind of storage system, and also they don't have any kind of analytical system here. So if the Burroughs project will compete with the central crowd in long term, they have to expand their infrastructure layer from to this area storage, also analytics area here. Okay? That's what you should remember. And then based on the understanding, Let's start with the value curve process analysis as usual about Cardano, okay? Then when you look at the Cardano it's here, okay? And I said that the three main analytical points here, okay? First, you know, compared with Ethereum, Ethereum is the first bus project in the blockchain space, so they have a fast move advantage, which is very, very critical for this industry. So if you want to understand about the fast move advantage, please check about the other video about the fast move advantage here. And Cardano is a later player to, to join this bus, you know, market stuff, so they don't have any kind of you know, fast move advantage here. And the other major bus products, such as EOS and Tron, also doesn't have this kind of like, you know, fast move advantage here. Then transaction system, of course, all people play and you know, have the uh, marked A here because the you know, blockchain is a 
you know, transitional system stuff, okay? But when you look at the storage and analytical system, which is will be very critical for, you know, for the future bus project and competing with the existing central cloud system stuff, we look at here that, you know, EOS perfectly marked is, you know, A here, but, you know, Cardano doesn't have anything here, okay? That's one of the weakness, okay? And about the consensus algorithm here, so one of the edges is actually Cardano purely proof of stake model, the Ethereum is actually switching from proof of work to proof of stake model here. So that's the edge. And unfortunately, since like in the EOS and the Tron doesn't apply the purely pure proof of stake model, you know, they focus on DP, DPOS model to compete with actually Ethereum. So that's the edge here. But one of the reasons they focus on this area for the DPOS model is they're thinking about the scalability of the software itself. Okay. So so to me, actually, you know, that is not a critical difference here. And the Ethereum is a purely focused on proof of stake model. We're waiting to the lease of the Resum 2.0 here. Okay. And the third in comparison here. So to Ethereum doesn't have any kind of their own application by themselves, but they were the you know, leading player for the industry. And the Tron actually competed with Ethereum to take the vertical product strategy, which I'm going to tell you later. So this is a differential key point, but then the Cardano doesn't have any kind of a uniqueness here. So that is why. So to me, the Cardano's value curve proportion is kind of very relatively weaker than other bus project here, Ethereum, EOS, and Tron. Okay, and then eventually, as you can see here, so this is like in a top ten bus project in the blockchain space, and then you know the orange mark one is a pure market capitalization of the each bus project, and the blue one is the DApps who's going to be built and running on in each bus project platform here. As you can see here, that the Ethereum is a dominant player here. Okay, so because they are the fast move advantage, so so this is a fast move advantage for this industry. Okay, that's what we should remember here too. Okay, so Cardano has not been left this one yet. This is a top ten one. Okay, so this is the reality that the Cardano is facing right now. All right, then one of like a differentiations Cardano can make to compete with these like you know other bus project platform is that they focus on not the B2C application, but the B2B applications. That's one of their, you know, survive in the long term. But also they're gonna face a reality that most of the retail investors should know about this is, you know, we can also learn the same analogy from like, you know, crowd computing market system in a central crowd, okay? So this is a market data 2019. And as we can see here, Amazon, AWS, Microsoft, Azure, and the Google Cloud, Alibaba, those are the four, you know, top four players here, especially these three players, the biggest one, because you know, market share of these in top you know, uh, three player is over 50%. Okay? Then here's a couple of niche players, such as Salesforce, IBM, and others here too. They used to be, Lockspace used to be a very major crowd computing services data center player here, but you know, they are now in here. Okay? Kind of a, and they eventually become a niche player here. And then why this kind of thing can happen? Let me tell you why. So, one of the critical difference between these four player and the these three player is these four player have you know application ecosystem on top of central cloud based on the B two C applications. Amazon have the you know e commerce services. Also, Microsoft has their own own B two C like you know office services. Google have like a search engine, YouTube, and Alibaba is the you know, largest e commerce player in the China market, right? And also, like, and they focus on the seriously focus on B two C applications, Netflix, Uber, all the people running here. Okay, but Salesforce focus on Salesforce is you know B two B you know SaaS product, right? IBM also the enterprise you know SaaS provider and SaaS on the cloud provider here. So these kind of market cap difference is happening here. Then why this kind of thing happens? I can explain the detail here from the Chasm theory. It's one of the major, like, you know, tech marketing theory, the high tech industry stuff. And uh, some people, you know, this is only applicable for the B2B market too. But I think for this, like, an you know, analysis stuff, you know, since the crowd computing system in this and compression stuff, NFS, Microsoft, Azure, and Google focus on B2B2C B2 application market, right? And then other Salesforce and IBM focus on B2B2B B2 application market space for this one, right? So this eventually, reach like a huge critical difference about a market share or a success of this you know, crowd computing system stuff based on Chasm theory. So the Chasm theory, you know, which have an innovator here, Ariadafta here, and Chasm here, then those people are very reliable in new technology here. 
And then, you know, once they're gonna cross the chasm, all the new technology is starting from the innovator, and once they're gonna cross the chasm, they got it's a very big market here, like an early majority, you know, which, which have a 34% of the old market share, and then late majority here, another 34% here, and then Lagarde, it's a very conservative player. And then these are the very conservative players, so that they don't want to use a new application, such as blockchain application either. Okay? Then here's a kind of critical difference between like a B2C app focus cloud computing system or B2B fo app focus cloud computing system. Because B2C applications, all the decision making process, whether you want to use this app or not, such as you want to use a Netflix, you want to use a Facebook or not, your own decisions personal one single decisions okay so that is why it's much more easier to grow up the user base like this way but in a b2b application it's not gonna happen like this way because in a b2b application such as salesforce it's a crm software if you want to like use this like a science product it's a corporations so you have to build the consensus inside right so you have to make the judgment from like your supervisor or vice president or your manager or something right in this process, since like an R innovator or an R artist over here is not the major player in that organization itself, so decision making takes much more time compared with the B2C application model. So that is why when you look at the execution speed or massive user market growth stuff, it's gonna happen like this way. So to me, some people say like, you know, Cardano is not focused on B2C applications, they focus on B2B applications, that's why they have a huge potential here too. I don't think so. Still, they're kind of facing about, you know, these market constraints which are typically happening about the B2B application steps here. So, still, you know, for them to compete with Ethereum, Eon, Tron, those are major like B2C application focused bus project here, it's extremely difficult to compete with them. That's what I want to tell you here, okay? So, based on understanding, let's move to the next topic of team analysis. So, this is, I think, the five key member for the Cardano. So, Nathan, he's a lawyer, so like a kind of right guy to running like a Cardano foundations. And then, Mamit, also like vice chairman. Also, he's running like an Emergo, which is like, you know, just like, you know, consulting business for Cardano, just like a functional, like, you know, consensus for the Eastern platform, okay? And then, you know, he's also have the career for the managing partner at the back Broxit Ventures, okay? And then Steve, so he's a head of the technical operations. So he's also kind of, you know, unique guy who have a financial background, but, you know, his study from like an you know, academic background is actually about the you know, engineering stuff too. So I think he's writing about, you know, Cardano open source management stuff, okay? And then Bakht, and he's a director on the global PR and communication and marketing stuff. And he has a, you know, amazing traction about the global media Relation at the social media lead at the honest young. So I think you know Cardano's market presence is quite strong. I think you know that you know success is you know, attributed to his you know tractions here. Okay, and the fifth guy, Domino, he's also a financial guy, and he's uh, money is like a financial issue about you know Cardano Foundation stuff. Okay, so these are the five key members here. But I think from the analytical perspective, compared with Tron, EOS, or Ethereum, I would say this team is not so strong. Okay, and the next one is execution power analysis. And then, you know, so this is a dapps.com data here. As you can see here, as I told you that, you know, all the market developments is gonna happening from the B2C application for the new technology all the time. That is why no traction data for the Cardano at this moment. On the dapps.com, all the data, you know, these are coming from B2C applications, okay? So it's a kind of clear sign here. About a category, the same thing still. It's a no data here too, okay? All right, and the next one, the token economy analysis. So the Cardano is in a bus project, so that is why they are categorized here, okay? And then to understand about the token economy style, especially the bus project perspective, I put the, you know, this network effects on a, you know, Tron itself. And then let me tell you why. So as I told you that Ethereum has a fast move advantage of bus project, so that is why every single B2C or B2B application developer, you know, prefer to use Ethereum as a first and for their first mobile advantage. It's naturally happening right now. That is why they're the, you know, top leader in the market. Other bros player who don't have any, like, in a fast mobile advantage stuff, they have to differentiate their product strategy to compete with, you know, Ethereum. And I think Tron is the most smart player 
to build a very pro you know, effective particle strategy here to go with Ethereum. And then this diagram explains about this point. So Tron has you know, DLive token as YouTube and then you know, BitTrend distribute you know, kind of CD, decentralized CDN. Okay? And the Tron, Tron platform is like this way. And the long term bus project, I think the game category, which is actually Ethereum, you know, the biggest player here, that's a critical advantage for the bus project, especially long term growth. Because of NFT will be the kind of critical elements. Because uh, a lot of like that player who have blind browser or the kind of things, probably you know they're gonna graduate from Ethereum, they want to have their own blockchain in long term. But gaming in us, it's not gonna happen like that way. So NFT will be the key success driver for the bus project. Okay. So Tron wants to strengthen this like in a game category. And then as we know that, you know, when you look at the YouTube, the major successful and popular content is actually game live streaming. Okay. And then DLive, the tokenized YouTube, they can increase a little bit like you know, gaming live streaming here, which brings us you know, a lot of advantage to Tron to develop the own gaming application here, because those people who can make money for the you know, advertising business or something can give the incentives of the gaming, other incentives to play the game on a Tron dApps here, okay? Then that growth is eventually come to like a bit trend, the monetization model here, because a little bit like, P2P, you know, validator or like miner who have an incentive to join the Tron ecosystem because a lot of market growth are happening here. Then they can provide more stable streaming here, subs and DLives. That is why this triangle, you know, cycle is a very, very competitive strategy for the Tron to compete with Ethereum. Okay. But Cardano has nothing like this way. So that is why when you look at the you know, value card profession again here, so EOS have a critical advantage here. Okay. To compete with Ethereum. And the Toronto have a critical advantage here to go into Ethereum because they don't have you no, know, both doesn't have any kind of fast move advantage that Ethereum have. But Cardano, they have fast move advantage here, but they have nothing here. Here. That's why it's kind of quite, quite difficult for them to survive in the long term market. That's what I think about. Okay. And then last one, the gov and governance perspective. So some people appear that the Cardano takes a very unique, unique approach about the DAO mechanism because, you know, then let me you know compare about the Ethereum model here too. So Ethereum, Ethereum implement proposal is coming up in, from the you know entire developer ecosystem, and then they're gonna you know start the discussion here. And then once they're gonna you know discussions reach a specific level, they're gonna run the voting stuff. And then you know once they're gonna get gain like a, over like a sixty or thirty uh, seventy percent agreements from the voting stuff, they're gonna start the implementations. Okay, and Cardano. They're gonna start actually start a research paper. So those people who have a strong academic back, background, such as PhD students, can write the research paper here. So you know the number of people who can put, you know, input the idea for like a Cardano is limited. Okay. Then also like after that, they're gonna run the peer review, as we're gonna you know normally see about the academic world, about like a researcher or professor who's gonna review the check the you know, documentation and stuff. Then they're gonna run voting, and then they're gonna run implementation at the end. So critical difference here. And about to me, I think you know Ethereum has much more scalability here because you know if they're gonna require only research paper for the you know implement the proposal stuff, the idea, those people who can bring the idea to the you know developer ecosystem stuff will be limited. So from like you know thinking about the more like you know diversity of the you know developer community or idea generation perspective stuff, you know ERP is more like a less hurdle. To join ecosystem stuff too, so I think it's a, it'll be more scalable. That's my opinion. So to me, even like a Cardano opinion in these points, that is not so attractive to me. Okay. All right, the hype cycle analysis. Okay, so this is you know hype cycle analysis as usual from the Gartner hype cycle analysis blockchain 2019 version, and the Cardano is you know category is, you know the easy area for us because this is a bus project, and but purely they are pure proof of stake. So here. Okay, so you know the real market adaptation is coming up here, so which is very beneficial for them too. But it's also the mature growth stage, so we we cannot expect a high potential growth like this way for the you know when you focus on only this market area here. Okay, but when you look at the DAO and the smart assets here, they have much more huge potential. Especially one of the reasons I'm very you know, interested in Ethereum is actually they are in high potential here, especially smart assets here. It's a very very disruptive technology. Okay. So when you look at the Cardano perspective, they don't have any kind of application about who can, you know, enable us to develop the smart asset here, such as the Mekana or something. So uh, I still see their project here. So uh, 
you know, future market growth for the Cardano project will be a little bit limited here, okay? So, so in total comprehensive evaluation, evaluations, last one, invest in one out. So about the pain points, I set the 5.0 without any questions. Boss is a very critical player for this industry. So that is why I set the 5.0 here. About a product, you know, purely proof of stake model and public blockchain, which is great, but they don't have any kind of a strategy system to compete with, you know, EOS. Also like, you know, to compete with Ethereum, they need to build their you know, more radical strategy approach, which is currently Tron takes to, you know, fast move out a bunch of player Ethereum here. So from this perspective, I set the 4.0 here, okay? About team, I would say kind of relatively weak team, 3.50 here. So, and the execution power, when you look at the team here, so the execution result is not so strong enough, quite a talking one here. So that is why I set the 3.50 here. And then about token economy, as I told you that, you know, they have quite weak about, you know, differential, differential from the Ethereum. So that is why I set the 3.50 here. And about hype cycle, so as I told you that, you know, the blockchain on the DLT market, it's kind of much, much at growth stage. So we, we cannot expect, you know, exponential growth anymore. And about the smart asset, the DAO stuff too, it's still, you know, about Cardano is, you know, pretty unsure. So that is why I set the 5.0 here, okay? So the total score is 23.5 point, okay? So my, you know, minimum criteria for the investment is, you know, 25 points. So I hope they will get over more than 25 points, but at this moment, it's under the score, so I can't recommend to invest in Cardano at this moment, okay? All right, so that is all this time. So I also make a lot of interesting content about the crypto and the blockchain space. So I thank you for watching, stay tuned, bye.